Hello, uh, we're going to be doing a quick unboxing of the One Netbook, One Mix 3 today. Let's just jump right in with the main unit. It's quite a nice uh, box. It's quite a wrapped in plastic, there you go, so let's have a look, comes up quite nicely, it's quite a heavy uh, box, it's uh, quite stiff, so inside we have the laptop, here, you can see uh, both sides, you have um, Intel Core M, and this is the 512 gigabyte version with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory, I think. So under the laptop, we have a charger and some instructions. Let's have a look here. Uh, so some foam padding. Okay, so uh, instructions. And that's all. So we have short instruction manual in Chinese. And here's the charger. We have a USB type C cable. It's type C on both ends. It's braided. Let's see if we can zoom in there. Let's see if I can get the charger out. Charger brick itself is labeled PD, presumably for power delivery. Um, that is the specifications of the charger. Um, that is not super clear. Let's see if we can get that. 30 watts. Okay, let's uh, see. So it's got that, it's not detachable, and this is what looks like a US or China plug. Uh, and 100 to 240 volts, so you don't need an adapter to use that worldwide. Okay, so that's about it for the actual uh, box for the device. It's not quite a lot in there. Let's move on to the accessories next. Since I got this on JD.com, they, they include a bunch of um, free gifts. So this is the USB hub. Um, it's got a USB A port and Ethernet and some USB ports. Looks like it's only 2.0 though. So. We also have a mouse, Logitech uh, M170. It's a wireless mouse. Um, it's a receipt. And here's some wipes. It says it comes with a screen protector. I'm not sure if that's here. I'll look in a moment. And we have a micro HDMI to HDMI cord. Um, it, although it looks like a HDMI to HDMI cord online. We also have some headphones, Sony ones, pretty standard. Um, let's see what else we've got here. And of course we have this uh, case as well. Um, it said it came with a pen online, but I'm not entirely sure if that's uh, missing because of um, because it didn't come or because uh, it wasn't included with a bunch of stuff that was brought back from China for me. I'll have to double check on that. Um, but it looks like this is all we have. I have momentarily set aside the accessories and we will move on to 
the device itself. Um, it's a little bigger than I originally expected. Um, let's see if I can get something for size here. Uh, so, oh, there we go. So we can see, um, we have a ruler here. I know the dimensions are online, but we're about 20 centimeters, 20 something centimeters that way. And uh, roughly one and a half centimeters. So um, and it's about 13 centimeters wide. So you want to keep that in mind. I don't think this will fit into most pockets. Um, it is quite large, but it is quite small for a computer. So um, let's, let's, um, let's see. I'd say it's about the size of a not the smallest, the little uh, medium-sized uh, paperback novel, which is a pretty good size. It's not very heavy. It's uh, about 0 0.6 kilograms. That's what they say it is. Yeah, well, let's uh, get into it. Is that, how, is that how it opens? Nope. Okay, let's... Uh, the packaging kind of reminds me of... Uh, the packaging they use for the Apple MacBooks. Quite a lot, actually. It kind of just folds out, and the device comes out. So this is the black version. Um, the black version only comes with the 3S, which is the 16GB um, version of the 512GB SSD. Um, Someone, someone online uh, mentioned that it looked a little bit like plastic, uh, or looked a little cheap. Um, I think it's, I think it looks um, pretty standard for a black, um, sort of black aluminum type uh, casing. It doesn't feel, it definitely feels quite solid. It's a, there's no, um, it. It feels very well built in the hand because uh, it's quite quite solid. Um, texture is actually quite similar to the uh, MacBook Pro. We have that there. Um, let's see if we can get a closer view on that. So, texture texture wise, I think the grain is a little bit finer on the one mix than it is on the MacBook. I'll let you listen to that sound. I don't know if you can hear it. So overall, it's very similar. So um, no issues there. I, I definitely think the build quality is quite uh, decent, definitely on par with um, what you see there. So let's move on. So opening it up, it's not too uh, stiff. The hinge is actually quite uh, it's quite nice. When you close it down, it sort of there's less resistance here than there is like here, so it's actually quite nice. It reminds me of the hinges in other uh, notebooks like that one. And you got a little sheet in the middle, pretty standard. And there's the keyboard. Let's have a look. Here. The keyboard feels like a pretty standard scissor switch keyboard. Uh, it's an optical mouse. One thing I notice is the optical mouse is, if I'm not mistaken, a little bit, uh, a little bit um, off center there. So in terms of build quality, I think uh, that is the only real issue I can find with it so far. Everything else looks quite nice, uh, just that it doesn't look, um, looks like, um, I don't know if you can tell. And it might just be the surface finish of that, actually. So the mouse keys are the same uh, keys as the keyboard, so those will probably be the same experience as typing, which is quite nice. Um, keys are pretty easy to press. Um, Key travel, pretty standard, not as much as you would normally expect because it is, after all, a very small and portable device. Uh, I'll see if I can measure the key travel in a moment, but uh, 
that might be difficult. Actually, I may be able to do that in a second. Um, yeah, so someone asked me to make some uh, video of the edges. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Let's see if we can zoom in for, on that a little bit. So the edges aren't uh, sharp. And that's a that's that's quite a nice touch because I used to have a Golay One, which was a similar a small laptop, it was more targeted towards the budget market, and that had very sharp um, edges, as is the case with uh, many uh, cheaper aluminum devices. I can't find it right now, or can I? Uh, yeah, well, it's not so important, but. Overall, this is quite nice. This is, again, it feels very, very similar to the MacBook Pro. Um, it should basically be the same experience case-wise. That's actually really nice. Um, it's very, very well-finished edges. Hinges, I've gone over that. Let's zoom back out. Yeah, so the hinges... Um, very, very smooth operation, even flipping it back. So like that. Is there sort of a little bit of a, there's a little bit of, doesn't close all the way. So there's a little bit of a gap when you have it in tablet mode. But in normal use, I don't anticipate that should be a problem. It's very comfortable to hold in the hand in tablet mode. The keyboard might take some getting used to since it's on the back, but I've been told it doesn't activate when the display is flipped over. Flipping it back and forth, um, I think a lot of videos online I've seen, uh, people have, um, I think it shows sort of like a little bit of a janky kind of opening to suggest that the display um, hinge is quite um, stiff, but actually, in my experience, it's, it's, it's really, really smooth. It's um, mostly the small size of the device that makes it difficult to fold smoothly, but it's, it's, there are no issues here whatsoever. It works perfectly well, closing, opening. It's a very nice device. Of course, uh, there's the logo on top. Uh, some people in the Discord were complaining about that, but it's quite uh, unintrusive. You don't really see it very much. You can probably see it like that. It's, uh, it's quite nice. It's um, subtle. Uh, I think it's more noticeable on the silver version, which is the 8 gigabyte version. On the back, we have some ventilation slots. Um, not too much to see there. Heat sinks on that side, and that side just an intake. It's kind of blocked off because of the uh, it's a little sticker in there. Overall, this is not too bad. It's got rubber feet. What more can I say? Let's see. So you got some screws on the edges to open it. Uh, there's a sticker there. Yeah. Moving along the sides here, we have a headphone port on the side and a micro HDMI port output. And the I did get a cable with it, but if you didn't, there are small adapters that plug in. Um, along this side, we have a TF card or micro SD card slot, a type C charging port and a standard USB type A um, port. Uh, one thing to note, uh, there you go. There is a gap between the screen and the keyboard. It is greater on the hinge side than it is on the side. Um, does not affect anything. It's still very, very sturdy, very well built. No issues at all. And I think we've been on the inside already. So, um, here we go. So, closer view of the keyboard. We have escape, tab, and a bunch of these function keys. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the print screen key is in a different font from the rest of the keyboard. Maybe they'll fix that later, but no big deal. A very small caps lock key next to the A. 
Um, let's check quickly whether that's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's entirely possible you'll hit that accidentally. The difference isn't too big. Um, you might want to remap or turn that off, perhaps. Um, especially because the keyboard is quite a lot smaller than the standard um, MacBook keyboard, but uh, doesn't feel awfully cramped or anything. Um, we have fingerprint sensor here. It's not a button. That's the power button. Um, we have F11, F12. Okay, so the F keys are along here, and they go up here. It's great. Um, this is fan control, function, windows. Yeah, it's a pretty standard keyboard. So the main differences seem to be uh, with the punctuation keys. And surprisingly, the arrow keys are actually easier to use than on the butterfly keyboards from the Mac. So let's do a quick comparison, actually, um, between the MacBook and the One Mix 3 Yoga. So if we, give me a moment, let's uh, move the camera. So uh, size-wise, the entire One Mix device is actually, uh, if we look at this, let's flip it over. The keyboard size is actually completely fine because it is the same it is the same width as the letter keys on the MacBook, basically. Um, so if we line that up, yeah. So it should make for a decently comfortable typing experience. The only differences, as I noted, would uh, mainly have to do with the fact that the punctuation keys have been moved. Um, those might get take some getting used to. These keys are in the same place, they're just a bit smaller, and the arrow keys are actually um, a little bigger, the up and down, compared to these uh, tiny ones on the butterfly. Overall, I think the keyboard is pretty well laid out for a device the size. Uh, we got delete and backspace keys. Um, I'm not sure. So um, yeah, so they are sort of in different places. These keys, of course, are here. So if you're doing a lot of programming, you're probably going to be going, um, probably going to be going up there a lot, uh, which isn't too big a deal compared to going there, in my opinion. But it will take some getting used to. Um, Let's take a closer view of the typing experience, as in the key travel. The keys go down pretty... The actuation force is very light, and the click... There is a, there is a kind of clicky actuation point, as with most uh, scissor keyboards. Keyboard is not mushy um, at all, uh, unlike some of the Dell keyboards I've used. Um, the keys, they hit sort of the bottom, their travel, they are not anywhere as near as um, sort of like they don't bottom out as hard as they do on the as they do on the um, Apple but they are scissor switches uh, I assume because that's what they feel like key travel is definitely way more than the MacBook Pro but if I had to go by feel, I'd say they're less, they go down less than the old keyboards on the MacBooks, um, but more than the new ones. The key actuation force is much lower, and they're very easy to press, and not something you'll get tired of using, so for gaming, whatnot, it's probably, um, That'll take some getting used to as well because the W and S keys are a little farther apart than normal on the MacBook. So that uh, you'll have to reach up there to do that. Mm, what, what other uh, common keys do we use? Copy and paste. Those are in the usual places. That shouldn't take too much getting used to. Um, space. And as I said, the mouse keys and the mouse. So that's about it for the keyboard. Okay, so we've all been sort of waiting for this, I guess. Uh, it's time to power on and see where that gets us. Um, I'm 
I'm guessing it does not ship charged from the factory. Huh. Oh, there you go. One netbook. The display is a tablet screen, so it's sort of, you know, Windows thinks this is the right way up. Um, hopefully that will resolve itself. Okay, there you go. It's uh, turned. Now, I'm sure you can see the PWM flickering right now on the camera. Um, I personally don't find it to be annoying in real usage. Moving your hand quickly doesn't, um, you don't get that stroboscopic, um, stroboscopic effect. And overall, I, th I think the, um, the amplitude um, peak to peak of the flickering is not very, very high. And the resolution, I mean, the uh, frequency doesn't look very low, so it should, uh, in theory, be fine. So, we have a touch mouse, and uh, the mouse feels basically the same as if you had an optical mouse and you took your finger and you rubbed around the bottom of it. I actually tried that one a few days ago before I got this, um, just to see what it feel like. Um... The edges of the little optical touch point are sort of they sort of catch on your finger. They really do. Um, that kind of impedes the operation of this. I'm not entirely sure what's the best uh, way to do it. Um, Precision-wise, it is quite precise. So you, I can move the cursor very little. Um, the acceleration curve on this is actually fine. I wonder if this would be, the touch point would have been better if it was. Um, um, mapped like that, um, just because your finger, especially if you've got some oils in your finger, can um, get caught on that. But fortunately, uh, there are ways to solve that if you do not um, if you do not like that surface. For example, if we take a piece of tape, let's see if that still works. No, it does not. So unfortunately, that will not work. Um, putting anything on the surface will probably stop it from working since it is after all optical and not capacitive so that is something to keep in mind overall um that's eh, it's not the worst it's not that bad uh, my fingers get less tired using this than a track point so that's something Okay, so precise positioning is a little bit of a take some getting used to. Tapping to click does work. I assume right clicking is not. Hi there, easy. I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. A little sign in here, a touch of Wi Fi there, and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way, and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom of your screen. Okay, there we go. Um, so we know sound works. Um, I don't know where it's coming from. We'll test that in a moment. Let me see if I can get rid of the PWM flickering, because this is probably going to bother someone. Brightness. It's interesting because um, the key here that with the bright uh, the sun not filled in is actually make it brighter, and or is that volume? No, that is volume. Okay, so function the function key switches it to volume and okay yeah so still the brightness key okay so it's still flickering on full, so unfortunately it looks like the PWM is not going away. Let's see if we can fix that with the camera instead. Is that all right? Okay, we're at 1 60th and the flickering is slightly there, but um, I feel like it is something we will just have to simply deal with. It looks fine to me. Of course, uh, turning it down causes more flickering. Okay, it's minimal at full, but still existent. Start with the region. Let's put that to go with that. Touch screen is working fine. Um, is there a pre-applied screen protector? I am not sure. Is this the right keyboard layout? US. Let's go with that. Let's 
skip. Yeah, let's connect to Wi-Fi. Now we're back after entering the password. Let me make sure the camera's focused. Next. Sure. So the text size on the screen is actually um, pretty good. I'm sitting about a meter away from the screen. I can read it perfectly fine, um, even the small ones. So you get a decent amount of screen space. Um, offline account, no. So I, I do naturally tend to use the touch screen instead of the um, touch mouse, but let's uh, let's try that more. So I think it's fine if you make very deliberate actions. Setup is going pretty well. Uh, I don't hear the fan yet. Can I see if it's turning? Oh, it's on. The fan creates a very soft, but... Uh, well, it's a very soft um, sound. I, I can't hear it from a meter away. But if I put this up close to my ear, it's half air noise and half uh, that uh, DC motor cogging sound. So that actually might bother someone in a very quiet room. Keep in mind I have the air conditioning on here because it's quite warm, especially with all the lighting for the video. Um, but even if I listen closely, no, I can't hear it. So I, I can't hear it. You probably can't either through the uh, phone microphone because it is, um, you, you, you do have to be quite close to hear it. Oh, and it looks like it's turned off. So no, the fan does not run um, constantly. It only runs when it's needed, uh, which is a good thing because otherwise it would create uh, noise and battery drain. Okay, there we go. Uh, yes, we're in. So we have Microsoft Edge open. So let's see, uh, let's try to go back to the desktop and let's look at display first. Let's go to display settings. Oh yeah, that does take getting some used to, getting used to, yeah. Brightness, we're on full. And the battery is mostly charged from the factory. <clears throat> we're on 87% and Windows says there are three hours and 31 minutes remaining. Keep in mind it's probably also doing updates and the OneDrive setup thing that, you know, Microsoft likes to force. I can hear the fan now, slightly. The sound I hear from back here is mostly the motor noise and not the sound of the air. So that is something to keep in mind. Let's see. We are at 250% by default and that is a very reasonable um, size, but let's uh, try a bunch of different things. 225, I think, is probably usable. Uh, cancel. Let's see about uh, making it even smaller. Let's see, 175, definitely more space, not as large. Text is, yeah, at 100%, you probably don't want that, but. Um, you know what, it's definitely readable at uh, phone kind of distances. If we set that to 150, which is what the minimum they would suggest is. Um, text is about um, as small as um, some of the smaller text on phones. So um, honestly, I would say that 175 or even 200 is pretty safe. Uh, but the default is pretty sane. It's not 
you know, tiny or anything. It's, uh, let's uh, keep it at recommended for now, because that way you can see it better on video. Let's do a quick focus. There we go. So, um, pretty responsive, but we're not doing anything too heavy with it. Let's do a quick control alt delete and open up task manager. So here we can see we have the M38100Y over here, and we have 16 gigabytes of memory. We have a wireless. Uh, does it say what it is? Yes, it is a Intel dual band wireless AC 3165. Seems to be working fine. Um, we got a 4C 512 gigabyte SSD, so no, it is not um, split into two. Um, it is not split into two, like, Originally, I think uh, on the Discord, uh, one of the representatives mentioned that it would be 256 on the, on the board and 256 in the M2 slot. Um, they are using one monolithic drive, and if I assume correctly, that is the micro PCIe. Here we have uh, Intel UHD Graphics 615. Um, Computer's not doing very much. CPU's at sort of 46%, just humming along at 1.8 gigahertz. Um, so that's pretty good. Let's see what else we can try. Overall, um, so far, pretty good impressions. Let's see if it's getting warm. Okay, yeah. It's getting a little bit warm on the bottom. Let's see if I can get a temperature gun on that. Right now the keyboard is sitting at 32 degrees Celsius after setting it up. And the back of the device is getting a bit 33, 32. So a comfortable temperature, but then again, we're not doing anything with it so far. Um, the keyboard should start warming up uh, later on because uh, there's a heat sink under the battery. Ambient temperature in the room, about 23. So, overall we're doing pretty well. Let's see if their battery uh, settings have changed. 85%, um, so we've lost... Okay, we're down to 2 hours and 11 minutes now, at 86%. So, definitely the battery life you get on this is going to be quite affected by what you're running on it. I will do more testing on that, of course. But first impressions wise, that is it. Brightness wise, it's doing quite well. It's quite bright. This this room is really, really bright right now. And uh, definitely the screen is easily readable in this brightness. And I'm, I'm quite happy with it. It's not overly blue, it looks so in the video. It is quite, uh, actually that's a pretty good representation if you look at the white on the remote here and there. Um, it's not too blue, it's not too, you know, it's, it's a pretty reasonable display actually. Contrast, pretty good. Um, no real issues that I can tell. Quite happy with that. Touch screen is pretty accurate. I can hit everything, you know, everywhere, even bottom, no problem whatsoever. Calibration is pretty good out of the box. So that looks like the end of the sort of unboxing, first impression, first look segment, I guess. Uh, it's kind of been going on for a while now. Uh, I guess what I'll do is I'll use this for a while, and I'll do some measurements and some testing, and I will come back with another video, hopefully, detailing more about the performance of the display. We'll put a colorimeter on that. I'll put XTU on this and measure some powers and whatnot. We'll see about thermals, battery life, and if we can overclock it a little bit. We'll see. 
that's it for now. Uh, thank you for watching.